Hello everyone, it has been a while that I posted some videos, I had a lot going on, but now we are back. Sorry for not updating all of you, and so I would like to continue the next part of this story to you guys. Without further ado, let's pick up where we left off after these months. Prince Bjorn thinks it might be a good idea to make the castle walls higher. The still disappointed queen asks Bjorn if that's all he has to say. Bjorn replies that it's not, as this is the first time such an article has been published, and there's no need to take it too seriously. Plus, the more criticism the former crown prince gets from the media, the more it boosts Leonid's legitimacy. He asks his mother not to worry too much and to look at the bright side. The queen responds that she is not worried about Leonid right now. She is more concerned about Bjorn, her beloved first son. She emphasizes that she is not trying to improve the royal family's reputation at his expense, as he has already sacrificed enough. The queen just wants her son to be happy, and Bjorn feels happy hearing his mother's words. He tells her that he is content as it is. Meanwhile, we go back to Erna, who asks Walter why he was looking for her. Suddenly, her father angrily calls her a cheap wench. Erna is shocked to hear such words from her so-called father. Walter remembers that she left the party at House Harbor earlier, pretending to be sick. Walter asks Erna how she dares to deceive them with her innocent face. Erna, shaking with fear, doesn't know what he is talking about. Walter shows her a newspaper and asks if the article is true, that she was with the Archduke. Erna is shocked when she sees the article. We go back to Bjorn and the Queen. The Queen asks Bjorn if he is serious about the daughter of House Hardy. She pleads with him to tell the truth so they can discuss it with his father. Bjorn notices the Queen's plea, smiles indifferently, and tells her it's not like that. The Queen asks if he isn't interested in Hardy and what he plans to do about the damage to Lady Erna's reputation from this incident. He responds that he doesn't know. Meanwhile, Erna is shaking with fear. It's true she was with him, but the article is wrong and misleading. Walter, furious, slaps her out of anger. At the same time, Bjorn tells his mother that it's not really any of his business, making him seem uncaring or perhaps hiding his true feelings. We go back to the scene where Walter slaps Erna. Scarlet tries to calm him down, reminding him that no matter how angry he is, he shouldn't do that, especially since Erna has a party to attend tomorrow. Hearing this, Walter asks about the party and tells Scarlet about the rumors circulating. He calls Erna a scoundrel's woman and questions the point of sending her to a party. In this heartbreaking scene, we see Erna's blood dripping onto the newspaper. Her father tells her that just when her value was increasing, she caused a scandal and doesn't know her place, causing them to miss out on good marriage prospects. Finally, Erna realizes that her so-called father plans to sell her. She had heard the whispers but didn't believe it at first. She couldn't believe Walter would be so cruel. She thought he would want to marry her off, like any parent. Now, she sees he might be trying to atone for abandoning her. Even so, she just wanted to give him a chance to be her father, hoping to remember this time fondly. Now, she feels foolish and pathetic for thinking that way. Bleeding, Erna asks Walter if this was why he asked her to stay for a year to save the house. Was it just to sell her off? Both Walter and Scarlet are shocked to hear this realization. Angrily, she asks Walter if he really sees her as something to sell to the highest bidder. Walter smiles maniacally and tells her she must have forgotten it was her who suggested the deal. Mockingly, Walter asks if she really thinks staying for a year would suffice as payment for the Varden House. If so, her grandmother and those who raised her must have made her an idiot. This angers Erna, who tells them not to insult her grandmother, saying they have no right to. Walter claims he has every right as her father and insists she should be grateful he's trying to find her a good husband. He says she would have ended up an old spinster in that tiny village and demands she be obedient and not ruin things. He warns her that if she tries anything like that again, he will sell her small house. Furious, Erna reminds Walter of his promise to keep her the house and asks how he can threaten her so cowardly. Walter gets angry and slaps her again. Scarlet intervenes, telling him to think carefully before doing anything bad to Erna. Walter retorts to Scarlet that even an idiot like her should understand what he's saying. Meanwhile, Pavel reflects on how hard his day was. Though he is being sponsored, the banquets are exhausting. 
He remembers being relieved when Count Lehman's second daughter liked his painting and paid well for it. However, he also recalls that Lehman was the highest bidder for Erna and wonders why she, of all people, is being considered. Pavel can't believe Erna is being considered a candidate to become Count Lehman's wife. Given all the ugly rumors about her and the nobles defending Princess Gladys while condemning Erna, he thinks of the elder count, the debauched men of high society, and even Prince Bjorn, whom he disdainfully refers to as the poisonous mushroom prince. When Pavel thinks about all those terrible people using Erna, his blood boils and he grits his teeth in anger. Pavel wonders if she needs help to get out of that house. If she returned to Buford, he doubts she could go back to her old, peaceful life, as Viscount Hardy or Walter are too involved now. Pavel doubts Walter would let Erna go without a fight, making everything so complicated. While walking home, Pavel sees Erna sitting on the porch, waiting for him. He calls out to her and notices how badly bruised she is from her father's beating. Meanwhile, an hour earlier at Bjorn's place, he sees Erna walking towards Pavel's place. Bjorn looks at his watch, realizing it's late for a noble lady to be walking around without a servant. He observes Erna and remembers the recent scandal that has made her the new target of high society. He is sure there is turmoil inside the Hardy's house. As she walks, Erna notices Bjorn looking from afar. She sees the sadness in his eyes while he smokes a cigar. However, she turns around, not facing him, and rushes to get away from his sight. In Bjorn's mind, he wonders what Erna's problem is. She smiled just fine when they locked eyes at the ball. Now, he again wonders where she is going, noting that it is not in the direction of the Hardy residence. However, he claims not to care about her. Now, in the present, Erna is staying at Pavel's house, having Coco with him. She recalls seeing the prince earlier and wonders why he had to see her at that moment. Erna thanks Pavel and apologizes for burdening him, mentioning that he is the only one she can count on. Pavel tells her she did the right thing and reminds her that he had told her to come to him if she ever needed help. With a concerned look, Pavel asks Erna if she wants to return to Buford. While sitting, they lock eyes, and Erna says she wants to but can't right now. If she doesn't hold up her end of the deal, her father will threaten to sell the Varden house. Pavel is surprised and asks about the deal. She explains that she needs to do as her father says and get married, and that was the deal. Pavel tells her she can't continue staying in the Hardy residence. Erna knows she can't just smile and nod while her father tries to sell her off. She needs to find a solution before that happens. Pavel sees how miserable she is and, like a big brother, comforts her, holding her tight. He asks why she doesn't just give up the house. Erna responds that if she does, they will have nowhere else to go. Pavel assures her that he will help. At the end of the month, he will get some money for the painting he just sold. While it isn't much, it should be enough for her family to rent a house in the countryside. Erna is surprised and tells Pavel he doesn't need to do such a thing, but Pavel reassures her that she doesn't need to worry. He will just be lending her the money. Pavel understands how precious the Varden house is to Erna, but he knows it can't be more important than her own life. He is sure Baroness Varden or her grandmother feels the same way. Pavel tells her she can pay him back when she is secure, so she doesn't have to worry about anything else. Erna feels emotional and tears up at Pavel's words. Pavel then informs her that her father is going to try to sell her off before the fall is over. It would be impossible for her to scrape together enough money to settle her family before then. Pavel advises Erna that she needs to focus on getting away from her father first. He encourages her to work on that, assuring her that everything will hopefully be fine. Days pass, and Erna Hardy disappears without a trace. In high society, people wonder why no one has seen Miss Hardy recently. According to the Viscountess, she is ill, but no one believes that lie. To them, no one cares about what happened to the girl after the incident. Meanwhile, at the tavern, Bjorn and his friends discuss it. They wonder what will happen to their bet if she doesn't reappear in time for the rowing competition. Another friend is sure she'll show up it's the biggest event of the summer, after all. Another friend responds that if Erna is really sick, it wouldn't be hard for her to attend the event. He insists those are just rumors and believes she is lying low because of the scandal. Bjorn is eating an apple while one of his friends tells him to give up glaring at the door, 
saying Himes wouldn't dare show his face unless he lost his mind. Suddenly, Himes, the one who assaulted Erna, enters the tavern. Bjorn's friends are surprised and call Heinz a crazy guy. Without hesitation, Bjorn approaches Heinz and tells him it's been a while. Heinz is scared to see Bjorn there, and murmurs can be heard around them. Heinz doesn't respond and is visibly nervous. Bjorn brings a whiskey and asks Heinz to drink up. As he pours the drink into Heinz's cup, Bjorn mentions the newspaper article where Heinz claimed that Erna seduced him first and was involved with both the Archduke and Bjorn causing the fight between them. Heinz blamed Erna for the whole mess. Nervous, Heinz listens as Bjorn sarcastically asks if that's really what happened, saying he remembers it quite differently and feels a bit confused. Bjorn intimidates Heinz by patting him on the back, making Heinz flinch and nervous. Bjorn asks Heinz why he went around telling that story, mentioning that he planned on never seeing him again, which is disappointing. Heinz nervously asks what Bjorn wants to say, to which Bjorn responds that it's nothing significant. Bjorn then stands up, and Heinz feels relieved, thinking Bjorn is leaving. Suddenly, Bjorn kicks the chair, causing Heinz to fall with it. Bjorn grabs the whiskey and tells Heinz that, according to his story, they were rivals, so he thought he would treat him accordingly. Bjorn presses Heinz to the ground with his foot, smiling as he tells him a fun fact about how he treats his enemies. Bjorn pours the expensive whiskey on Heinz's face, shocking everyone watching. Heinz pleads for him to stop, but Bjorn just smiles, puts down the whiskey, and leaves. This act regains respect for Bjorn for defending Erna. While heading to his carriage, Bjorn thinks of Heinz as an idiot who can only squawk behind people's backs, but admits that Heinz's antics bring some amusement. Inside the carriage, Bjorn notices Lisa looking sad and worried carrying Erna's bag of faux flowers. He wonders why she is not with Erna. Meanwhile, Erna is making faux flowers, with Lisa watching her with concern and sadness. Lisa tells Erna she's working too hard, but Erna replies that she needs to focus on small tasks to avoid boredom. Erna appears fully recovered after her father's beating. Lisa responds silently, then tells Erna she's going to deliver the flowers to the department store and asks Erna to rest until she returns. Sitting quietly, Erna thinks about needing to wait two more weeks. In that time, she plans to return to Buford with Pavel. She feels shame about accepting his help, but sees no other choice. Erna reflects sadly on how her father fell victim to a scam, losing a significant investment and ruining his finances. To recover, he tried to marry her off to the highest bidder. She regrets not seeing through the scheme sooner, feeling like she was fooled in a pyramid-like deception where a swindler tricked her father, who then deceived her. Erna is upset, imagining how disappointed her late grandfather would be to witness all this. She resolves to leave behind her naive self and escape from this situation. Suddenly, Lisa bursts into her room, startling Erna. Lisa's expression indicates urgency. She tells Erna that a message arrived from Schuber Castle. Erna tries to calm Lisa and asks for details about what happened. Nervously, Lisa grabs Erna and reveals that the Queen wants to see her. Erna prepares to meet Bjorn's mother. Meanwhile, Bjorn and Leo leave their home. Bjorn recalls his mother's request for them to visit their grandmother at House Arsene with Leo. The Queen's firm directive reminds him of Duchess Arsene's personality, he knows firsthand her deep love for her grandsons, as well as the intense anger she showed when Bjorn divorced Gladys, refusing to see him for a year. At first, she allowed him to visit in the second year, starting last winter. She was kind enough to let him sit at the same table as her. However, she insisted he couldn't sit directly across from her or speak to her. Bjorn wonders if she'll avoid seeing him for another year upon hearing rumors about him and Erna Hardy. Meanwhile, Leo watched his older brother closely, wondering why he seemed lost in thought. By the way, we can call Leo instead of Leonid for short. Leo wanted to suggest they tell their grandmother the truth, but he knew Bjorn wouldn't agree. Apart from Lar's royal family, only three people know about the incident, his father, mother, and himself. If he hadn't refused to become crown prince until the end, he doubted Bjorn would have confided in him. They're twins, but his older brother is tough. Leo could never have done what Bjorn did. 
Bjorn's mix of harshness, duty, distrust, and consideration is hard to believe. But now, Leo doesn't care anymore. Bjorn recalls a moment where he and Erna met after her assault. He asked her what she would have done if he hadn't come that day. She smiled and said she would have waited because there's only one road between the castle and the city, and she knew he would cross it eventually. Bjorn stayed silent and then offered to take her home, but she insisted she was fine and could take a stagecoach. He remembered how proud she sounded about knowing how to ride a stagecoach before she left, which made him smile. They unexpectedly saw another royal carriage, wondering who it could be. To their surprise, it was Erna on her way to meet the queen. The queen welcomed Erna to her garden and offered her tea. Erna felt nervous in the queen's presence. The queen noticed Erna's outdated dress and minimal makeup, quite different from her appearance at high society events. Recently, the queen had secretly investigated Erna, discovering she was raised by the Varden family despite carrying the Hardy name. The Vardens, despite being a fallen noble family, still maintained their elegance and reputation for honesty. The queen, aware of the Varden's reputation, questions Erna about her relationship with Bjorn. Nervously, Erna echoes the question. The queen smiles, warning her against dishonesty. Erna then opens up and shares their story. The queen becomes captivated by their tale. Erna tells the queen about her plan to repay Bjorn with earnings from selling artificial flowers. Surprised, the queen asks if Bjorn approved. Erna honestly answers, and the queen, amused, laughs warmly. Erna, still nervous, wonders why. Afterward, the queen shifts the conversation away from Bjorn. They chat about ordinary matters, and Bjorn isn't mentioned again until Erna leaves the castle. Back home, Erna feels drained and jittery from meeting the queen. She imagines her grandmother's shock upon learning she met the queen, wanting to write her a letter instantly. But she knows her grandmother would be upset if she knew it was about her scandal with the prince. Erna remembers the queen's demeanor kind yet firm, cold yet warm. Her light golden hair and sharp, Delicate features resemble the prince's. Erna no longer wants to think about the royal family. Tired, she flops down and plans to go to bed early. The next day, Erna attends an outdoor party near the lake. High society guests comment on her recent quietness and speculate she might have fled after the scandal, calling her shameless. Erna arrives with Lady Myers, dressed in a stunning gown adorned with purple flowers and sheer white fabric, impressing the guests. Bjorn notices her beauty with a glare, and Gladys watches in disbelief that Erna would show up after causing a scandal. Erna and Bjorn greet each other with bows when they meet. The announcer announces the start of the summer rowing competition. As the day goes on and the sun sets, everyone enjoys the festivities. Gladys, still observing Erna, decides to approach her, with Louise asking why she felt the need to greet her. By the way, Louise is Bjorn's younger sister. Gladys explains it would be less awkward that way, mentioning she couldn't ignore Erna forever. Gladys approaches Erna, calling her name and warmly greeting her. Erna is struck by Gladys's beauty. Gladys mentions they haven't properly met before and expresses pleasure in meeting Erna. Guests whisper about their conversation. Erna respectfully returns Gladys's greeting, expressing her honor at meeting her too. Erna suspected the rumors were linked to the prince, considering her past as his wife. She couldn't shake the idea that both the queen and now the prince were involved with Gladys, making her wonder about the scandal's impact. Meanwhile, Bjorn and his friend smiled as they watched them. In Gladys's view, Bjorn observed like he was watching a play. She felt sorry for Erna, realizing she might be unwittingly used due to her circumstances. Gladys then spoke to Erna, mentioning she heard Erna wasn't part of any clubs yet and empathizing with her potential loneliness. She asked if Erna had any interest in theater. Intrigued, Erna asked for more details about the theater. Gladys explained her club was preparing a play to raise funds for the municipal nursery in 10 days. Gladys suggested Erna join, waiting for her response. Erna hesitated but eventually apologized, shocking Gladys. Erna appreciated the offer, but couldn't attend the play, apologizing sincerely. Erna's unexpected refusal surprised everyone, and she bowed apologetically sensing their shock. Guests discussed Erna, some expressing disbelief at her turning down the princess's offer, seeing it as rude. 
Hearing the murmurs, Erna felt uneasy, wondering if she had committed a social mistake by declining. She reassured herself that such rules didn't exist. Gladys felt embarrassed and awkward, while Erna was unsure how to handle the aftermath. Erna declined because she would be leaving soon, making it impossible to attend an event in 10 days. She felt it would be even ruder to pretend to accept and then not show up. Erna planned to explain, but was interrupted by Bjorn appearing behind her. Gladys involuntarily flinched at his sudden presence. Erna was surprised by Bjorn's sudden appearance and locked eyes with him. Bjorn grabbed Erna's shoulder and asked Gladys if she was done talking to Erna. Gladys, tearful and nervous, nodded in response. Bjorn insisted on taking Erna with him, ignoring her attempt to explain she wasn't finished talking to Princess Gladys. He casually remarked that Gladys would agree. As night fell by the lake, Erna pondered the events and asked Bjorn if she had been rude to Princess Gladys. Bjorn began to understand Erna's concerns. Without much hesitation, he urged Erna to decide whether to defy Gladys, unaware of the challenges ahead. Nervously, Erna assured Bjorn she never intended to be rude. Bjorn, knowing she had outright declined the invitation, listened as Erna wondered if refusing a high noble's invitation was poor etiquette, despite it not being a formal rule. Bjorn acknowledged that, unofficially, it could be seen that way considering Gladys's status, potentially making enemies in high society. Erna paused and asked if Bjorn thought Gladys took her refusal negatively. Bjorn confirmed she likely did. And with that, I conclude this part of this episode. Now, what will happen next? Will Erna resolve all of her problems and the misunderstandings? Did Bjorn finally develop his feelings for Erna? And lastly, is it really bad that Erna refused Glady's invitation? Tune in for the next part of this series as we continue to bring you exciting stories. Thank you for watching.